Ladies and gentlemen, Season 23, a.k.a. Season of the Witch, is here. I've been gone for a while, and some would say that this is not really the best time to come back to Destiny 2, especially after everything that has been going on over the past few weeks. What's up, guys? Reckless here. Welcome back to another video that is heavily long overdue. Let's go ahead and talk about what you can expect from Season 23. If you guys want the full Bungie experience, all of the changes that came with D2 with Season 23, then I will go ahead and put a link in the description for the patch notes for update 7.3.0 that were released yesterday. I want to apologize if this video is all over the place. I'll try my best to keep things in order. So let's go ahead and start with the obvious things. Dragon's Breath is a thing once again. Not like anybody ever wanted it, but in the process to get the catalyst is a bitch and a half. You can get Dragon's Breath in the season pass on the paid tier if you bought the season pass or in the free tier at level 35 if you didn't. After you get the Dragon's Breath, you need to head to the tower and go to the gunsmith in order to get the quest for the catalyst. Currently, I'm on the second part of the quest and probably the longest and most draining part of this quest, which is the calibration data generated. The quest says that, quote, higher tier nightfall completions, crucible and gambit wins, and defeating guardians provide additional progress, end quote. But I don't really think there's much of a difference because I've done tons of crucible, killing tons of enemies, and I still only got like two points for each match. Yeah. This catalyst was made to be done over time. And given that we have a long season ahead of us, Please, take your time to get this done. Do not rush it. Season of the Wish will be seven months long due to the final shape being delayed until June 4th, 2024. Now, if you have not noticed the like abundance of thorns running around PVP, as well as PVE, believe it or not, Thorn will most likely be meta in PvE as well as PvP now that the catalyst has been released. And let me tell you, it feels amazing. I ended up getting the catalyst for the thorn at the end of my second match in checkmate control. Now, I'm not sure if the thorn catalyst is 100% tied to PVP or if it's just like a world drop, but checkmate uh, control is where I actually got mine. The requirements to complete the thorn catalyst is pretty easy. All you have to do is pretty much just get kills with Thorn until you reach 100%. Equip the catalyst and then enjoy the 20 plus more uh, range as well as 10 plus more stability to Thorn's base stats. And after absorbing a remnant, you gain increased weapon range, mobility, and handling for a short time. However, there is actually a trick to using Thorn the correct way. Yes, the correct way. After you actually get a kill, go ahead and reload your weapon manually or use an ability to reload it. This will put the magazine back at nine. Then go ahead and collect your soul devourer that actually dropped where the enemy died. And this will give you an additional four rounds in the magazine. You can keep doing this up to 40 rounds in the magazine. Now, you probably won't see much of 40 rounds in PVP, but you will definitely see it in PVE. However, you still will see a high round count in the magazine in PVP as well. And do you see why this weapon is probably gonna be meta? Like all over Destiny 2? Also, Thorn has this sick looking Root of Nightmares ornament that I feel that everyone should get. Doesn't matter if it costs over, it looks amazing. Next, let's go ahead and get into comp real quick. The weapon this season four comp is called, and I apologize if I butcher the name, Belisarius D. It's a hockey foundry weapon with a 450 RPM, much like the Disparity, Revision Zero, and Outbreak Perfected, just to name a few. But what is the most impressive thing about this pulse rifle is that it has a chance to have a maxed out range of 100, like mine, and it's not even fully masterworked. Or, it could be in the 90s if you equip something like Arrowhead Break on it. Titans! 
And yes, Rix, I'm looking at you. I have to be real with you guys. And I think I speak for every hunter in Warlock main when I say, get fucked. The crazy amount of nerfs that came to the Titan class was all over the place and well overdue. Not gonna lie, the nerfs to Titan, Shoulder Charge, and Bonk Hammer should have happened like last year. Not sure why it took Bungie so long to change things, but whatever. However, every class that had a lunging melee that could be activated after they were sliding and shooting either a shotgun or a fusion rifle was also nerfed. Now, that can no longer happen. These classes included all Titan subclasses, as well as the Arc Hunter and Warlocks. Strand on all classes in PvP is pretty much, need I say, overpowered. Bungie, nerf it already. I'm joking, don't do that. I just started playing again and I love it. These last few weeks before season 23, I have been having a lot of fun in PvP with a Strand Hunter build that I do plan on doing a video on, so definitely stay tuned for that. But, given the minor buffs to stasis that affects PvE and PvP, do not be surprised if you start seeing a tidal wave of stasis entering PvP. Not only that, but during the mid-season patch, stasis will be getting yet another update to make the class even stronger. Also, Sola got huge buffs due to the seasonal artifact, so I will be making updated Sola builds that will take advantage of all the perks in the artifact. And because of all the buffs and nerfs to each subclass, I will also be doing updated videos on them in season 23 as well. Wishing all the best is the seasonal quest for Season of the Wish, and like all of the season quests before it, it will be time gated. So, we'll get a few steps to do each and every single week. The quest has 55 steps. Yay! There's been a couple of UI changes, like right before you hit launch on a destination, you are presented with a screen for Fireteam Finder, which is currently um, temporarily offline as of this video, as well as an invite screen for your friends. We can now access the vault as well by hitting the down arrow on your PlayStation or Xbox controllers or whatever the equivalent is for PC. The Polysemi story mission is a weird one. So if you already beat that story mission and progress through the story, if you have a friend that is just starting it, the mission won't let you help out, which I think is stupid given how Bungie wants you to be able to play with your friends all the time, but does things like this that prevent you from playing with them even if you're in the same party. And if you're trying to join the mission while your friend is actually doing it, you'll get a message saying, quote, you don't have permission to play the activity you're trying to join, end quote. Bungie, fix this like yesterday. We shouldn't be having issues like this at the start of the season. Now let's go over what we can see at the tower. At the tower, you'll see a few changes to the vendors. Zavala, Lord Shax, and the Drifter have a new ritual weapon. It's called Chivalric Fire. It's a new caster frame sword that can roll repulsor brace and destabilizing rounds, but another trait it has is called Attrition Orbs, which dealing sustained damage creates an orb of power, and that isn't too bad either. Now, we are getting specific engrams for most of the vendors. Like normal, Zavala, Shaq, Saint-14, and the Drifter have their respective engrams, but now the Gunsmith has his own engrams as well. However, when you want to focus faction weapons, it will cost three gunsmith engrams no matter what. But it seems that the gunsmith engrams are dropping all over the place. You can get them randomly by completing bounties, dismantling armor and weapons, and by ranking up with the gunsmith. On another note, focus of weapons with Zavala, Shax, or the Drifter prior to season 23 cost three Vanguard, Crucible, or Gambit Engrams, and their Season 23 weapon cost one Engram. In Season 23 comes the return of the Double-Edged Answer. It is a Vanguard Adaptive Frame Void Sword from Season 2 of Destiny 2 with an updated perk pool that can roll with Repulsive Brace and Destabilizing Rounds. Unfortunately, it has a huge perk pool, so getting the roll you want will be quite difficult. 
Like Zavala, Shax had a returning weapon as well. It's called Retro Futurist, and it is from Season 1 and 13 of Destiny 2. It's a lightweight frame void shotgun, also with updated perks, and they look like shite. The best perk on this version of Retro Futurist is probably Quick Draw and Snapshot Sights. All of the other perks it has for PvP is garbage. Saint 14 has a brand new strand adaptive frame trace rifle called Incisor. It has an RPM of 1000. Yes, 1000. Jesus. The Aya Soul sniper rifle is back as well, and you can focus both and other available trials weapons with just one trials engram and 20,000 glimmer. However, legacy focusing cost two trials engrams, but only 10,000 glimmer. Heading over to Gambit, everyone's favorite game mode. <laughs> yeah, right. The Drifter has brought back Breakneck from Season 5 of Destiny 2. It's a precision frame auto rifle that's actually pretty good. Not gonna lie, Breakneck is probably the only reason you will be going into Gambit this season. Unless you're one of those weird people that actually likes playing Gambit. So, kudos to you. And, last but not least, the Cryptarch now has special orders of Enhancement Prisms, Ascendant Shards, Ascendant Alloys, and five Enhancement Cores that you can buy three times a week at a huge discounted price in Glimmer. For Season 23, we will have a few events during Season of the Wish, and the next event, if I am correct, is the Dawning. It's Bungie's winter event that should start mid-December-ish. After the Dawning, we will have Moments of Triumph in February, which will feature weekly quests called Wishes. And I'll give you guys more information on those quests as soon as Bungie releases the information to us about it. Guardian Games has been moved up to March 2024. According to Joe Blackburn, who is the Destiny 2 game director, quote, Guardian Games will revitalize focus on this sort of class v class competition we think is really going to accelerate the creative and the excitement around the event, end quote. Let that sink in real quick. I'm sorry, Joe. You literally just told us what Guardian Games is. You didn't tell us anything new about it. Anyway, Bungie is moving Guardian Games earlier on in the year in order to make way for this new thing that Bungie has in the pipeline called Destiny 2 Into the Light that everyone will have actually access to whether you pay uh, for the game or you're just a free-to-play player. But in the coming months, we will hear more about that and I will let you guys know what uh, Destiny 2 Into the Light will actually feature. As for a few minor things, <laughs> the Witcher armor set is now available in the store for a low price of 2,000 silver, which is like $20 US. I'm sorry. If you want to spend money on, on the game, by all means, go ahead. I'm not going to lie. I bought The Witcher set for my Hunter, but that's probably the only character I'm going to buy it for. I know. I know. $20. It hurt my soul, too. The store also has a Season of the Wish shader bundle, which is about 800 silver. And out of it, I think that only two of them actually look good to me, so not really worth buying. For those who actually like Drip, apparently, uh, for you Titan mains out there, there is another ornament for the Lorely that is pretty badass, and a few of my friends are actually geeking out about it, and it's called the Adamantine Rebirth, and it's only 600 silver. I'm currently not a fan of every Sparrow in the game, now having 190 speed, but I really feel that Bungie should have just left that only to a few exotic Sparrows, but I get why they did it. Still not a fan of the limited amount of Vault Space or Deep Sight Harmonizers we get in the Season Pass. I have a ton of Legendary Weapons in my Vault that need Deep Sight Harmonizers, and I don't have enough for each weapon. I mean, Bungie, you should literally let us buy them with materials from the Cryptar. Hint, hint. You want player retention? Then this is a start. That's pretty much all we know for Season 23, but since we have a long season, what should you do after finishing everything in the current season? Me personally, I will be following all of the weekly raids, 
the weekly dungeons, the daily lost sectors, etc. in order to get all of the exotics, whether it be weapon or armor, that I currently don't have, like the collective obligation, which, yeah, <laughs> it's been long overdue. I was out on hiatus when it was released and I just never got to actually getting it. But now, as a completionist, I feel obligated to go out and get all of the exotics that I need and don't currently have. I have plenty of quests that I haven't finished on each character, so I'll probably go ahead and do those as well. And if you guys have any quests that you want help with, just let me know down in the comments section below and I'll see what I can do to help you. Or if I am not able to, I'm pretty sure someone in my clan will have no problem helping out. All in all, we see a lot of changes coming to the game. Are the changes groundbreaking? Probably not besides the slide shotgun melee combo that was um, recently removed, but not really. But it is a good step in the right direction, in my opinion. We still have plenty of season left, given that the season just started yesterday and much more content to go over, so definitely stay tuned. And that, my friends, brings us to the end. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.